power that is shipping its citizens off for disagreements. There are laws on the books now that characterize who might be a terrorist. Someone missing fingers on their hands is a suspect, according to the Department of Justice. Someone who has guns, someone who has ammunition that is weatherproofed, someone who has more than seven days of food in their house can be considered a potential terrorist. If you are suspected by these activities, do you want to have the government have the ability to send you to Guantanamo Bay for indefinite detention? A suspect. We're not talking about someone who has been tried and found guilty. We're talking about someone suspected of activities. But some of the things that make you suspicious of terrorism are having food, having more than seven days of food, missing fingers on your hand, having ammunition, having weatherproofed ammunition, having several guns at your house. Is that enough? Are you willing to sacrifice your freedom for liberty? I would argue that we should strike these detainee provisions from this bill because we are giving up our liberty. We are giving up our, the constitutional right to have due process before we're sent to a prison. This is very important. I think this is a constitutional liberty we should not look at and uh, blithely sign away to the executive power or to the military. So I would call for support of the amendment that will strike the provisions on keeping detainees indefinitely, particularly the fact that we could now for the first time send American citizens to prisons abroad. I think that is a grave danger to our constitutional liberty, and I advise a vote to strike these provisions from the bill. And what do we do to terrorists? We torture them, right? To get the answers, like Jack Barr on that stupid 24 show. I never watched it. Never. This is what we do. Two alive. Nicey nice. Isn't that nice? And why like that? Because of the Geneva Convention. But that's not what we're going to get. This is the Inquisition and the tools of the Inquisition. The axe that chopped off the head, then uh, instruments of terrible torture. They were mainly tortured for heresy. Now, what's the definition of heresy? Let's look in Article Heresy, page 440. Greek heresis choice. Deciding for oneself what one shall believe and practice. That's heresy. So deciding for yourself was in this time period of 1,260 days was an act of heresy, was a sin punishable by death. That's pretty sad, isn't it? So taking away the conscience of man, setting up a power. Now, here we're going to have some very interesting things happening. These were some of the instruments they used. These were for example, tongs that opened up and you put hot coals in them, and then you sort of modified the person who you were interrogating with these hot coals. These here are ankle guards or ankle clamps, and you'll notice the pins in them that when they were screwed tight, they went right into the bone. I mean, these people were pretty serious about what they did. This particular instrument was still used by General Franco in the 1970s. This is a pretty mean instrument. This is one where they put it around your neck and then they start screwing that screw in there. Not a very nice thing to do. Stocks, of course. Thumb screws. This instrument was particularly nasty. They would hoist you up with your hands tied behind your back on a rope until you hang upside down in the air. And then they would tie this huge stone to your feet and throw it off a shelf and it would go and tear your arms out of their sockets. These are pretty terrible things that they did in the Inquisition. And I know we even talk about these things, but the cruelty of the system needs to be known. Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Dinner during Ramadan. I am heartened by the clear, unequivocal condemnation of this disrespectful, disgraceful act. According to President Obama, God 
is against burning the Quran. And if you pray about it, the angels will tell you. And he says he's praying on it. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope he listens to those better angels. A few days ago, General David Petraeus, commander of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan, condemned Pastor Jones for burning the holy Quran. We condemn the action of an individual in the United States who burned a holy Quran. That action was hateful, it was intolerant, and it was extremely disrespectful. So, there you have it, the official position of U.S. leaders on burning a religious text. My question for Secretary of State Clinton and President Obama and General Petraeus is this. Do you think Americans are so dull, ignorant, stupid, slow-witted, and scatterbrained that we forgot about this little incident? Bibles written in Pashto and Dari, the two most common Afghan languages. Bibles sent by a church to a U.S. soldier in Afghanistan. Bibles that were later burned by the U.S. government. Who burned the Bibles? A bunch of Muslim radicals? Burned by the U.S. government. Who? A toothless hillbilly straight out of deliverance? Burned by the U.S. government. The U.S. government? The U.S. government. <laughs> I thought only racist, intolerant bigots burned holy books. That's what I've been repeatedly told by the same government that burned these Bibles. It was their best judgment at the time. The best way to deal with it was to destroy them. And I understand that they were burned. Why would the U.S. government burn Bibles? The leadership confiscated these Bibles so they could not be distributed here in Afghanistan. I don't get it. Wouldn't the Muslims of Afghanistan welcome a Christian evangelist with open arms on account of Islam being so peaceful and such? A U.S. military spokesman tells CNN that kind of religious outreach could have provoked a violent backlash against Americans in this devoutly Muslim nation. Interesting. You don't burn the Quran, because if you do, Muslims might go on a killing spree. But you do burn the Bible, because if you don't, Muslims might go on a killing spree. It was made to throw the Bibles away, and in war zones, U.S. troops are required to burn their trash. Ah, now I understand. You had to burn the Bibles because it's military policy to burn garbage. Would you like to know what the military's policy is when it comes to the Quran? I have here a copy of a Department of Defense memorandum distributed at Gitmo, explaining how U.S. soldiers are to handle the Quran if they absolutely must touch a copy. Check out the highlighted portion. Clean gloves will be put on in full view of the detainees prior to handling. Two hands will be used at all times when handling the Quran in manner signaling respect and reverence. Care should be used so that the right hand is the primary one used to manipulate any part of the Quran due to the cultural association with the left hand. Handle the Quran as if it were a fragile piece of delicate art. Again, we are talking about high masons revealing their information. Humanity. Have you heard of the Humanist Manifesto and humanism in general? Right. This is a fascinating quote from Morals and Dogma. I read this entire book. It's the most heavy reading I've ever done in my life. I wouldn't suggest anybody reads it. It's such a pain in the neck, but nevertheless. The Bible is an indispensable part of the furniture of a Christian lodge. This is an original discussion. Only because it is the sacred book of the Christian religion. The Hebrew Pentateuch in a Hebrew lodge and the Quran in a Mohammedan one belong on the altar. And one of these and the square and the compass properly understood are the great lights by which a mason must walk and work. Possible that American citizen provisions, would it be possible that an American citizen then could be declared an enemy combatant and sent to Guantanamo Bay and detained indefinitely? I think that as long as that uh, individual, uh, no matter who they are, if they pose a threat to the security of the United States of America should not be allowed to continue that threat. And I'm wondering whether the senator is familiar with the fact that the language, the 
the language which precluded the application of Section 1031 to American citizens was in the bill that we originally approved in the Armed Services Committee, and the administration asked us to remove the language which says that U.S. citizens and lawful residents would not be subject to this section. Is the Senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration that asked us to remove the very language which we had in the bill which passed the committee, and that we removed it at the request of the administration that would have said the act that this determination would not apply to U.S. citizens and lawful residents? I'm just wondering, is the Senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration which asked us to remove the very language, the absence of which is now objected to by the Senator from Illinois? There are four great challenges of this new global age, which our generation must address urgently. Financial and economic instability in a world of global capital flows, environmental degradation in a world of changing energy need, violent extremism in a world of mass communications and increased mobility, and extreme poverty in a world where there are still growing inequalities. Answering these questions will determine whether people have continued faith in globalization, in multilateralism, in modernity itself, whether they will have confidence in the future. And what all these challenges have in common is that none of them can be addressed by one country or one continent acting alone. None of them can be met and mastered without the world coming together. And none of them can be solved without agreed global rules informed by shared global values. Today... Funny how we said that in a Catholic church, huh?